Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about follicular monitoring on ultrasound. Follicular monitoring is a series of ultrasound scans that track the growth and development of ovarian follicles during the menstrual cycle. These follicles contain eggs and the goal is to identify the dominant follicle which will release an egg during ovulation. The process is vital for women trying to conceive whether naturally or through fertility treatments such as ovulation induction, intrauterine insemination or in vitro fertilization. Follicular monitoring helps to determine the timing of ovulation for natural conception or fertility procedures. Monitoring is done through transvaginal ultrasound. We will look at ultrasound images of the ovaries at different days of the menstrual cycle and you will learn how the follicles grow, how the dominant follicle appears and what the features are during ovulation. After ovulation, you will see the presence of corpus luteum in the ovary. What we have here are the days 1 and 2 of the menstrual cycle. But before this phase, we will talk about the process that takes place during the end of the previous cycle. The luteal phase is the last phase of the menstrual cycle. Towards the end of the 28-day cycle, a process known as recruitment takes place. During this process, a small collection of follicles is formed. These follicles measure between 2 and 5 millimeters. Multiple small antral follicles are found in both ovaries. These are the follicles that grow later in the next cycle. After the recruitment process finishes at the end of the previous cycle, the next cycle starts. The first phase of the menstrual cycle is the follicular phase. Approximately the first 13 days are part of the follicular phase. This phase is divided into early, mid and late follicular phases. The early follicular phase is usually the first 5 days of the cycle. If the menstrual cycle is of a 28 day duration. This image is obtained at day 1 of the menstrual cycle and this image is obtained at day 2 of the cycle. These images are not from the same patient. These are two different cases. I am just showing you how ovaries usually appear during this phase. Days 1 and 2 are the early follicular phase. During the first 5 days of the cycle, a process known as follicular selection starts. Some follicles from the recruitment process that occurred at the end of the previous cycle measure 5 to 10 millimeters during this time. These follicles are selected to grow further, whereas the smaller ones that measured below 5 millimeters regress in size and become erratic. In this image, a few small follicles are visible. These hypoechoic structures are follicles. We can see three follicles inside the ovary on day two of the cycle. The echogenic area is the ovarian stroma. These images are also taken from day two of the cycle. Few small follicles are seen inside the ovary. During this phase, we are in the follicular selection process. The follicles which measure 5 to 10 millimeters are selected, whereas others regress. These images are from day 3. In this image, you can see the follicles are larger as compared to day 1 and 2. We are still in the follicular selection process. In follicular monitoring, the baseline ultrasound scan is the first scan. 
It can be done when the patient is in the early follicular phase of the menstrual cycle, days 1 to 5 of the cycle. Day 3 is usually chosen to start the ultrasound monitoring. The purpose of this scan is to assess the ovarian volume. Then determine the number of follicles that are present in the ovary, the antral follicle count, measure each follicle and measure the endometrial thickness. You have to evaluate all these features in both the left and right ovaries. It is important to check for any ovarian cysts, large dominant follicles or any other pathologies in the baseline scan. You have to take at least two measurements of each follicle and then determine its mean diameter using the two measurements. During the baseline scan, a follicle should not measure greater than 10 millimeters. Now we move on to day 7 of the menstrual cycle. Days 1 to 5 are part of the early follicular phase and days 6 to 10 are part of the mid follicular phase. These images are obtained on day 7. Follicular development is monitored here. A scan on day 7 is preferred. The frequency of scans is every 1 to 3 days, depending on the ovarian response and follicular growth rate. During days 5 to 7, the process of dominance begins. At this stage, the follicle that measures greater than 10 millimeters get selected to be the dominant follicle. You will start to notice larger follicles. One follicle will be the largest one and is most likely to be the dominant follicle. In this image, this follicle is the largest and in this image, this follicle is the largest. However, sometimes a follicle that appears to be the largest during days 3 to 7 may not always be the dominant follicle. Some other follicle can quickly start growing and become the dominant follicle later on. At this stage, the growth rate of the follicle is 1 to 2 millimeters per day. The dominant follicle is round with smooth margins and is hypoechoic. An atretic follicle is a regressing follicle. It is small, irregularly shaped and may be echogenic. Once a follicle reaches 16 mm in diameter, daily ultrasound monitoring is recommended. Increased ovarian blood flow with a peak systolic velocity of 10 cm per second or greater seen with Doppler is a good indicator of an impending ovulation. It is often observed during mid to late follicular phase. It may be present from day 6 onwards. When the size of the dominant follicle reaches 18 to 22 millimeters, it is considered a mature follicle. This is the time when ovulation can be induced using medicines or naturally. These images are obtained on day 9. In the left image, this is the dominant follicle. And in the right image, this is the dominant follicle. The follicle size is increasing. These images are obtained on day 11. Now it is the late follicular phase. Late follicular phase is from day 11 to 13 or 14. The follicles further increase in size. In the left image, this follicle is the dominant one. And in the right image, this is the dominant follicle. These images are taken from different patients. The number of follicles present in the ovary depend on the patient's age. In younger patients, more follicles are seen in the ovary 
as compared to older ones. Here are more images obtained on day 11 and day 12 in different patients. In this day 11 image, you can see one large dominant follicle, whereas other follicles are much smaller in size. The appearances of dominant follicles can vary. This image is obtained on day 12. You can easily see a large dominant follicle. On power or color Doppler, enhanced vascularity seen around the dominant follicle is a good sign which indicates maturation and impending ovulation. A follicle with strong peripheral vascularity is more likely to be capable of releasing a healthy egg. If this perifollicular vascularity is absent, it may indicate a failure of ovulation. A peak systolic velocity of 10 cm per second or greater within the ovarian stroma or surrounding the follicle further confirms a successful impending ovulation. Power Doppler can be used to assess follicle quality and select the appropriate timing for interventions such as ovulation induction and egg retrieval during IVF. The absence of this vascularity may suggest an ovulation or follicular dysfunction. These are images of day 13 and day 14. Day 14 usually is the day ovulation occurs. On days 12 to 14, a structure known as cumulus ophorus appears inside the dominant follicle. This is the structure that contains the egg. It appears as a small hypoechoic structure with an echogenic border protruding into the antral fluid of the dominant follicle. This is another image showing a cumulus ophorus inside the dominant follicle. It was seen at day 14 of the cycle in this patient. The image on the right is taken on day 16. Day 16 is the luteal phase. Ovulation has already occurred. The follicle has ruptured to release the egg prior to day 16. What we see here is the corpus luteum. The dominant follicle ruptures to release the egg and this dominant follicle becomes the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum has thick echogenic irregular walls. The appearance of corpus luteum is a sonographic sign that ovulation has already occurred. A small amount of free fluid in the pouch of Douglas or the cul-de-sac is also a sonographic sign of ovulation. You will find a small anechoic fluid collection behind the uterus. The image on the right shows a corpus luteum on day 16 of the cycle. This corpus luteum has thick, irregular, echogenic walls and a hypoechoic center. On color Doppler ultrasound, the corpus luteum also has a ring of fire peripheral vascularity. The corpus luteum, which appears as a structure with irregular thick echogenic walls, will show increased vascularity at its periphery. This is another image showing the corpus luteum on day 16. The image on the right is taken on day 17. The corpus luteum can also appear completely echogenic. This sudden increase in echogenicity of the dominant follicle indicates that ovulation has occurred. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.